Welcome to another Digital Anarchy tutorial. I'm Tor Olson, Software QA here at Digital Anarchy, and today we're going to be taking a look inside of After Effects at Beautybox and how to use it in conjunction with the rotoscoping and motion tracking software Mocha that is bundled with After Effects. So the reason that we're doing this tutorial is that Beautybox has this certain limitation where if you're analyzing the frame and getting the mask for your subject here, if I turn on show mask, you'll be able to see that anything that's slightly similar in hue or color to the skin tones is also being selected. So you can see that's happening with this earring right here and the side of this house. And where this can become a problem is if I were to do some color correction, say on the mask, um, say I wanted a, I don't know, a She-Hulk or something like that, you can see that part of the house is being affected by this as well. So of course this applies to any of the parameters that we're dealing with over here, um, whether it be sharpen or um, messing with our skin detail smoothing. So if we smooth her mask, it will also smooth the mask that was created on the side of the building and her earrings. And we don't necessarily want that, especially if a larger portion of the frame is being included in the mask. So for this tutorial, we're going to go into Mocha and we're going to take a look at how to isolate her skin tones and eliminate the inclusion of items like her earrings and the side of the building. So I'm just going to Apple Z out of the She-Hulk mode, as badass as that is. And the first thing we need to do is just select the layer that we're going to be affecting. And from here, go up to the top, select Animation, and scroll down to Track in Mocha AE. So once I click that, Mocha is going to open up. There we are. And for the sake of the tutorial, we're just gonna name this She-Hulk Roto. Now all this looks fine. The frame rate here is the same as the frame rate that we're dealing with back in After Effects. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click OK. And I'll load in the image. Now, if this is your first time rotoscoping or looking at Mocha, don't be too intimidated by what we've got going on here. Uh, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna define where the boundaries of our mask is going to be. So we have to keep in mind that we want to avoid the side of the house here and the earring as much as possible while still getting all of her flesh tones that are being shown. So I'm going to go up here to the Create x -Blinds Layer tool, select it, and from here I'm just going to create a border around where her flesh tones are located. Remember we want to remember we want to avoid getting too much of the earring. At the end of this, we are going to feather our mask. And here it's okay if I do a little bit of a crude job. Of course, for this tutorial, we're doing this very quickly just so you can get an idea of how this is supposed to work. Get around the sides of her face. And there. And if I just right click from here, it will complete the mask. Now you'll notice over here that we have our single layer, but we're not quite done with all of our mask creation just yet. What we do have to select is her arm down here because it is also a flesh tone. So if we were to do color correction right now with just this mask, it would just affect her skin tones here and completely ignore her arm. So we have to include that. And for that, we're going to select the Add x -Blinds button and finalize our mask. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. It's OK if it's a little crude. Because we know, based upon the mask that we were looking at back in After Effects, that Beautybox did a good enough job of getting rid of all of her clothing and her hair in the mask. Now Mocha is pretty good about tracking all these points that we've set and we're only going to be doing just about 150 frames because we're just working back in our composition here in After Effects with 5 seconds worth of footage. So we're going to start at the beginning and down here are our tracking controls. This first button here is track the next frame and the way this works is that it'll just track the mask forward for a single frame. If you want to go a little bit faster and that's alright for this video since our subject really isn't moving that much. 
uh, we could just click track forwards, which will just play out the sequence and track our subject as she moves around slightly. And whenever these points start to deviate a little too much from the skin tones, we'll be able to adjust them. Um, just pause the video, and once we adjust those points, just click track forwards again. Let's take a look at just tracking forward with the track forwards button. And if I ever see the mask delving off a little too much, like right around here, maybe just getting kind of missing out on the top of her forehead here, I might adjust it. So in that case, we're just going to adjust these a tad so it's back to our hairline. There we go. And we're just going to go ahead back to the track forwards button and adjust as we see fit. Now you don't have to be super duper precise. Um, you should keep it generally along this line, but what we're going to do when we go back into After Effects is we're going to feather our mask. So being a little bit rough with it is okay. All right, so we got to the 150 point that I was talking about. And so now we have this single layer with these two masks that we're gonna go ahead and import into After Effects. And how we do that is we're going to go down here to the bottom and with our first layer selected, we're gonna go down here to export shape data to get our masks applied to After Effects. So I'm gonna go ahead and click that from the drop down, we want to select Mocha Shape data for After Effects. And in this case, it's okay if we have selected layer, but for this tutorial, if you have more than one layer, you would select all layers. So we're going to copy this to our clipboard. If I tab back to After Effects and select our layer, I'm going to go up to Edit and we're gonna go down to paste the mocha mask. So one thing that's worth remembering when you're doing this is that you wanna have your playhead at the very beginning of your comp, wherever you started your tracking back at mocha. So in this case, the first frame. This is fairly easy. So if I were to say, put it at the 10th frame and paste it there, it'll paste the shape data that we copied starting on that frame forward. So you want to have your playhead start at the frame that you started your tracking back in Mocha. We want to have our blend mode be add. But of course, we're missing a few things. All the background, the trees, the house, even the earrings. And the way that we're going to do that is we're going to go into our project and drag the original file without beauty box attached just below. And voila! If you look, we'll be able to see that the mask is added on top and we're not selecting any of the earrings or anything like that because the mask is constricted to these values. Now here's the thing, sometimes we had our mask drifting in and out of these skin tones between this mask where Beauty Box has been applied and the underlying layer. For that, we need to go into our mask controls and we want to bring up our feathering to in this case, I think a value of about 35 or so would work. If I show the mask, you'll be able to see that we're selecting her skin tones without having any harsh lines, whereas before, if I can actually turn this back to zero, sometimes you will get those harsh lines in places where we weren't super precise, as in here. So this is without the feathering, with the feathering. And having a mask that isn't so precise like this is okay. You honestly really can't tell the difference between where the mask ends and where it begins. And of course, we want to do the same for her arm, which is the second layer. And we don't want her to look creepy, so we'll turn off show mask. And there you have it. 
we were able to isolate her face without including the building at all or the earrings. So I will gladly be able to turn her back into a She-Hulk with no risk of including that green in the building or her earrings. And that's really it. And of course here, maybe I included a little bit too little of her forehead. You can see I kind of corrected it later. But if I needed to switch that up, I could just go back to Mocha AE and be able to refine that, retract the mask, and export the shape data again. That's really all there is to it. If you want to make a she or he hulk of your own, you can go to our website at digitalanarchy.com and download our trial of Beauty Box and our other sweet plugins, as well as watch some of our cool tutorials there. Thanks for watching. I'm Tor Olson, software QA here at Digital Anarchy, and we'll see you in the next tutorial.